Welcome to another training session on UC. Today we are going to be looking at alarms, how they can be set, viewed and managed. Alarms are user-based defined tests. Once set, they are periodically tested against threshold values. If these threshold values are met, the alarm is said to be triggered. The first thing to note is that UC's home page contains a section in the dashboard called Alarms. Here you can quickly see which alarms have been triggered and any alarms that require acknowledging. Let's start by seeing how you can set up an alarm. To do this we need to go in and edit the alarms list. There are two ways of doing this. We can do this by using the maintenance menu. If I now select maintenance and then I select alarms, I'm shown a list of currently triggered alarms. As there are none, the list is currently empty. So the first thing I want to do is add an alarm to this list. Simply click on the edit alarm buttons in the top left corner. This changes our views and allows me to add a new alarm. I'm now presented with a drop down list from which I can select the different types of alarms available. These are lamp fault, missing device and burn hours. Let's try adding a new alarm which deals with burn hours. Next I'm offered uh, the opportunity for a scope for the alarm. I can either choose all devices, devices in a group or a single device. Let's choose a single device. Now I'm offered a search dialog to let me choose the device that I want the alarm to operate with. You'll be familiar with the channel search tool. We've covered this before in training on other sections of UC. Let's pick one of these devices to be our target for the alarm. I'm going to choose the Corridor South device. I select this device and it now appears in my list. Now I'm offered the opportunity to enter a threshold for the burn hours for this device. So I can either increment or decrement the burn hours using the buttons or in fact I can simply type a value in. I'm actually going to set this to be one hour. Finally the last item is asking me what should happen when this alarm is triggered. I have the option to either take no action or send an email. For now we're going to leave this as no action. And now I complete adding an alarm by simply pressing the add button. It takes me back to the page and you now see there is a new item in my list which says corridor south and if I expand that it tells me I've added an alarm type and the alarm type is burn hours and I can expand that further and it actually shows me it's a burn hours on corridor south that's the name of that particular device it's a threshold based on a single device uh, a maximum burn hours of one and it's showing me the last test uh, so far this hasn't been tested okay let's go back to our triggered alarms view if I now click the refresh button it will force the alarm that I have just entered to be retested and you'll notice immediately it's actually failed. This means that Corridor South, whose threshold criteria was set to one hour for burn time, has been met. You'll also notice that there's a date and time the test was conducted at. And you'll see a flag on the right hand side which is marked as Acknowledge. 
Before I go any further, let's just go back to the home page and see what the dashboard is showing us. Returning to the home page, we now immediately see there is one triggered alarm and one alarm requiring acknowledgement. If we click on either of these links, we'll be taken to the same page and we've been there already. But let's do that and you can see it takes us straight into the triggered alarm page. OK, so from here um, I can now acknowledge that alarm. What does acknowledgement mean in this instance? We already know that when an alarm is triggered it can cause an action. It will continue to cause that action periodically until it's been acknowledged. So for instance, if we're sending an email because the burn hours have exceeded our threshold, the email will be repeatedly sent until the alarm has been acknowledged. Let's acknowledge that alarm now. So you'll notice that the alarm is now acknowledged, but the alarm is still present in the triggered alarms list until it's reset. If we now reset the alarm, and it asks me if I really want to do this, and I do, it will disappear from the list. If I now refresh the list again, which will force the alarm to be tested against its threshold value, then the alarm will actually pop up again and it will be in the state where it is unacknowledged. Consequently, the action associated with this alarm will be executed. You'll notice that there are three other choices under the Acknowledgement button and these allow us to create a report, which I can do by clicking on the Paper button. It takes a moment to come up and now we can see the triggered alarm report. I just close that window now. Our other options are to print the report or send the report by email. I now want to show you some of the choices you get in terms of threshold settings, so let's add another alarm. I'm going to add a new alarm, and this time we're going to choose a lamp fault alarm. We're going to go this time for devices in group, and now I'm offered a search tool for groups, and I'm going to choose the main corridor group. Now we get a slightly different choice for threshold. I can either set my threshold by percentage of devices within the group or by number of devices in a group. Now you can see this would be very useful if I had a group which consisted of let's say 30 devices then I could set a threshold that said please alarm me if more than four lamp failures occur in the group or if more than 10% of devices have failed in that group. And if this threshold is met, I could actually say, please send me an email. And I add that. So now main corridor is an alarm type of lamp fault, and we can see that the threshold is 10% of the devices in this group would have to fail before this the alarm would be triggered and the action taken. Let's just go back to our triggered alarms and you can see obviously we've still got our burn hours alarm triggered but in fact there is no trigger for our lamp failure alarm. I hope you can now see how useful alarms are when handling maintenance issues in a system. We can predict when lamps need replacing by setting the correct threshold criteria for burn hours. We can also know when a site needs to be visited due to either lamp failures or we can set up alarms for missing devices which would indicate that the system needs some urgent attention. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this training session on UC.